what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so i just got done watching the night house just left the theater seeing the night house this will be my spoiler free review for the night house this is a psychological horror film directed by david bruckner and it stars rebecca hall sarah goldberg evan jo joni keek stacy martin and vondi curtis hall now i would just say right off the bat that i loved this movie and the reason why i loved this movie is because i have developed like a passion for horror movies or love stories rather that are disguised as horror movies and that's exactly the best thing i could use to describe the night house it's got its flaws but for the most part it is very effective in what it's doing it's very immersive it's got this it's very atmospheric rebecca hall carries the film very well she is this recently widowed individual she's still like reeling from the unexpected death of her husband uh her character name is beth she's been left alone in the lakeside home that her husband had built her she tries as best as she can to keep it together but then the dreams come disturbing visions of a presence in the house call to her beckoning with a ghostly allure but the harsh light of day washes away any proof of a haunting against the advice of her friends she begins digging into his belongings yearning for answers what she finds her secrets both strange and terrible and a mystery she's determined to resolve now like i said before this is honestly a love story disguised as a horror film at the end of the day that's what it's rooted in it's rooted in this couple that has been torn apart by something else that as you see in the trailers if you're watching the trailers the, the movie does a very good job at keeping you guessing what's going on honestly the way that everything plays out you you're starting to think okay her husband was doing one thing but no he was actually doing this no he wasn't doing one or two he was actually doing something completely different and it's it's just the way that it comes together in the end the way this movie is pinned is it's just like riddled with the dialogue is riddled with clues from start to finish and the dream sequences that that go on in the film and the way they are blurring the lines between this re this ghostly reality of interactions that beth has when she's sleepwalking and when she's actually awake and the way they kind of just coincide with one another as the movie's unfolding and you're not really too sure as you're watching is she really insane is she really all that well or is she, this woman actually right in what she's saying she doesn't want to believe that her husband was hiding all of these dark secrets from her and you know her her sanity is being questioned the entire time and you the audience are right there along with her because you're 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 questioning her own sanity too and you do get of course of course get your answers in the end rebecca hall again is knocking it out of the park she she does a, a fantastic job as this grief stricken woman who is just battling inside her the she's yearning for her husband who while finding out all these terrible things that it seems she's doing she's kind of throwing them to the wayside and saying there has to be a reason for this there has to be a reason for this and of course there is a reason and you find out a lot of terrible things that it seems he he was doing and of course everything is justified in the very end like i already made mention of but again the the, the biggest thing with me is this is one of those movies this is going to be one of those movies where i can see audiences having a issue with it more so than more more of the critics that are watching taking everything in observing all these little bits of dialogue this is a movie that requires multiple viewings it does the bits of dialogue that are foreshadowing the things that are to come the symbolism in the film all of this stuff that is kind of working together to come into this final puzzle that you get at the end with what you get isn't exactly I, i'll say it wasn't the most satisfying but as you rewatch the film and if you're paying attention and listening I, I i implore you to just listen to what is being said the dialogue is telling you what is going on but it's not like being bashed over your head with it it's just the whole movie is being told right as you're watching it and little moments of dialogue that you heard earlier in the film will make sense on a second viewing and you're like oh okay I, I i love when movies do that i love when they're relying on you the audience to have enough wherewithal to pay attention absorb everything and again like i said before the way it's directed the atmosphere the use of shadows and the lighting 
to kind of just get you into this uh, horrific experience that Beth goes through as she's trying to unravel what her husband was up to and it's just it's just so well done i i, I love the way this movie was put together I, I loved it it's not perfect it isn't without its flaws they do have a lot of throwaway characters such as her friends honestly like who cares about her friends when you see the movie you see what i'm talking about just one of those things where your main character is so focused on that everyone else around her feels irrelevant but you know it's got a lot to say about grief it's like a very good examination of going through the grief process i would say uh again i i just can't say it enough it's it's very atmospheric i i the atmosphere in this movie it's it's amazing i have never been one to say this but the jump scares in this movie they are well placed they are well executed i i would argue that there's a masterfully done like one long jump scare sequence of of things that maybe to some people might be like overkill but it's just the way it's done it doesn't feel like these jump scares are there for nothing they are of course there to get you to jump but they all serve their purpose in the way that they're done one after the other and then you know you think you're done and then boom there's another one it's just the way it's done the way i'm describing it might sound like it's being bashed over your head with nothing but jump scares and they're all cheap but they're not trust me when i say they're not and the dialogue again i can't talk about the dialogue enough the dialogue is your best friend in this movie please just listen to what is being said i cannot wait to watch this movie again because of how the dialogue it it just is your best friend it's your best friend <laughs> rebecca hall is not crazy you'll find it out at the end of the film she is leaning in the right direction and then you'll get your answers and i think a lot of us will like what the overall message of the movie was as it pertains to life after death and living life while you're alive i would argue but i think that the night house was a very well-made psychological horror film i would give it a seven out of ten let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure first of all you go see this when it comes out in theaters on friday but subscribe turn on post notification so that you never miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there to let me know any movies news reviews i'm going to cover in the future but all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video